Welcome back, Imperials, to Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. Gideon, who not long ago was a Lieutenant General in the Imperial Guard, is now the Rogue Trader Captain of the Vox DA. He has chosen to find a navigator first at the Navis Nobilite Station. Attempts to contact them have failed, and we are now going to dock at their station. Before the mission begins, let's have a briefing about what we're running into. The Navis Nobilite predates even the Imperium of Man. These are noble families made up of mutants who have a psychic ability to navigate Voidcraft through the warp. They are wealthy and powerful. That means we'll need to think on our feet to get what we need. Pathetic worm. You dare to argue with your master. It was not you whom I swore to serve within these walls. My lips are sealed. Confess! What was the old man's last command? What are you planning? Give up, Keeper. You have lost this battle. Again. <laughs> oh, we're getting nowhere with these ones, sir. Permission to execute them. Wretches, you will be consigned to oblivion for your transgressions against House Orcelio. These three are about to die. Immortal Emperor, Deliver your servants from peril. Prayers will not help you, servant of a damned. I wonder what's true. In the name of House Orcelio, I command you to execute the infidels. We'll have to really play it carefully. We can't trust anyone. Now they're dead. Obviously, we're here for one purpose. Not a step further. Master, we have some strange guests on the station. That would be us. Felic Orcilio. A tall man stops you with a gesture when you approach. Blood is trickling down the pearly scales of his weary face, and not just his own blood. Two jet black unblinking eyes are watching your every move, and the third one, the mark of a navigator's fate, is menacingly pulsing behind the lowered lid in the middle of his forehead. Step back, or I will unleash all the horrors of the sea of souls upon you. Emperor be my witness. You know what? I've got my aid here. I've got my seneschal. Abelard, if you would be so kind. The seneschal takes a deep breath. Before you stands his lordship, the rogue trader Gideon von Valencius, heir to the greatest protectorate in the current expanse, and bearer of the sacred warrant of trade. Allow me to point out that nobilite custom requires the lord navigator to introduce himself first, but given the <clears throat> unusual circumstances on the station, his lordship, the rogue trader, is willing to turn a blind eye to your hostility, but just this once. Felix says, In this case, I shall turn a blind eye to your unceremonious invasion, but just this once. There is a dangerous glint in the man's dark shrouded eyes. Very well, allow me to introduce myself. Before you stand, Felix Christoph August, keeper of this place. So you do not arrive to offer support to the traitors. This is great news. Having said that, you must understand that Yurik V is a holy sanctum for House Orcelio, and the path to it is only revealed to a select few. It pains me to say you are not on the guest list. Let's be rather direct. We'll talk about what's happening here later. I'm sure he won't let me leave without him trying to, of course, enlist me. We'll say, provide me with a navigator, and I will immediately depart the station. Philip responds, I do not think this is possible. Yurk 5 is an observation station. We do not sign contracts and do not provide navigators. We delve into the depths of infinity and chart the movements of the warp storms. And besides, Billy gestures at the disorder around him, you have chosen an inopportune time for negotiations. Very well. What is happening? Betrayal. A most banal thing in the life of the Nobilite, don't you think? I was stabbed in the back by my closest friend, Theobald Orcelio, the second keeper of Yurik V, and my mentor. On his instructions, my own people sabotaged the generators, blew up the shuttles, and brutally massacred the little servants of my mistress. Most unforgivably, they dared to take her prisoner. Greedy scum. I swear by the throne's light, their souls will perish in the darkness of the void. Felix falls silent for a few moments and then furiously slams the end of his staff into the floor. 
The madmen have captured Lady Cassia and are now torturing her upstairs while we are idly chatting down here. Help me rescue her or be gone, but waste no more of my precious time. Alright, sure. What kind of help do you want? I'm not here to enlist him, but the Lady Cassia, let's talk to her. I would never ask you for such a favor under different circumstances, and yet, Felix takes his hand away from his ribcage, notices blood and winces in pain, and yet Lady Cassia's well-being is above all. I haven't got many people left, and my wounds are too deep for me to act with precision and swiftness, but you, you may actually succeed. In order to ascend to her chambers, you will need to remake a holy relic, sanctified with the blood of Lady Orselio herself. It's a control rod of the elevator machine spirit. Imagine praying and <laughs> communing with your elevator. Anyway, I have one part and the other was lost during the mutiny. But even this relic will be of no use unless the elevator mechanism is powered. Sure. How do I remake it? I have a phylactery containing her blood. It needs to be taken to the laboratory, which is located behind one of the reliquary doors. The most ancient of sacred mechanisms will help to rebuild the rod. The tech priest ceaselessly performed the rites of appeasement so that the machine spirit would serve the house in its time of need. The fateful hour is now upon us. Alright. And how am I meant to power that elevator? The station's main cogitator, situated in the guard room, just enter the correct command sequence, and the sacred mechanism will do the rest. Very well, I'll do it. Why not? So what have you decided, descendant of Von Valancis's line? It's quite simple. We're here to get our navigator, and we could also potentially maneuver things to where we get a favorable treaty. I will rescue your mistress, but in return, I do require that House Orsilio sign a contract with my protectorate. Felix replies, sounds curt and tired. So be it. Hurry. Her safety is all that matters. But should you fail, our arrangement is finished. And now I've got her blood. I haven't even met her yet. Well, check out that body right by us. It's not too that far wasn't away. So difficult. The corpses were mauled by a force far beyond any mortal capacity. That's good Something to know. Ominous looks ahead. Adira says, white, white, bright, pure color, and it's all riddled with horrible veins that carry the poison of fear and pain throughout its body. Who are you? Why are you crying? Well, we need to jump across. If the witch is talking about the enemies of humanity who sit upon its abode of noble navigators, then our weapons will soon dispel their wicked misery. Oh, that they shall. Oh, check out that statue. You've got to be the lady. Hey, let's have a look around. Oh, there's a guard, Onward. which means we're about to have a battle, and I'm glad there's a pause for whenever there's a trap. If not for that, I would be in so much trouble. Attention to okay, Argenta, you'll take care of it. She's got the highest demolition skill. If I didn't have her, I would be in danger. I don't want things blowing up in my face. I'll pick up the loot after we're done fighting a battle. There's no point in waiting for that. Let's check out the bodies first. All the servants here died in the crossfire. Well, I don't need to worry about friendly fire. Not for them. Let's advance. There's a squad commander. Stand firm! We must not let the miscreants defile House Orsilio. Interesting. And you've got a medic too. Fire at will for House Orsilio. We've got everyone in position. They've got three guardsmen to our left. And many more above us. They've got the advantage. Let's see what we can do. We do not roll well for initiative. There's a miss. A good start so far. Here comes another guardsman. Gideon, it's your turn. We've got to deal some damage right away. Okay, three enemies to my left. So what do we do about that? It's pretty simple, I think. We could move up, but we wouldn't have proper cover. Let's move into the middle. Then we're going to use our voice of command. We'll use it on Argenta. I want her to hit anyone and everyone. Perfect. After that, bring it down on Adira. She's going to be able to move right away. All right, let's bring out her staff. She's going to use lightning arc. We don't need to worry about veil degradation right now. We'll take out two guardsmen. They're gone. Very simple for us. And she's done for the moment. She'll be back. Back over to Gideon. Gideon, you can't do too much from where you're at at the moment. I wish you could, but you're going to have to wait. 
So he's done for the moment. There it is. All right, Adira. You could bring out your other weapon. You've got a last pistol. However, your chance to hit, it's not very high. So instead, we'll go back over to Psychic Shriek. Two AP. We'll take out another guardsman. I apologize, but you've got to die. Then we're going to use Analyze Enemies. We'll use it on their squad commander. We want to hurt him a lot and quickly. He's probably very good, I would imagine. Forewarning, just to help out Abelard. He's in range. We've got Advice and Guidance, so he's got a further buff over to his weapon and ballistic skill. That's really good. It'll last for the entire combat. All right, back over to them. More guardsmen moving up. Not a single shot made. You're making the guard look bad. Well, I didn't train you. All right, we've got more enemies to worry about. I could charge ahead. You know Abelard's going to do it. He's got to. It's what he does best. He'll move over here. Then he'll charge up to attack their medic. Let's do it. Let's have at it. All right, 11 damage. Not bad. We've got to hit again. So we'll do that. A high chance to hit. The medic is gone. Who's going to give him any medical aid? Give him a hand. He needs it. Okay, endure. Let's reduce all forms of damage. Then we're going to use our brace for impact. He's going to be very tanky. Temporary wounds. Our turn for HP. Okay, Argenta. I want you to move up. That's what you're going to do. Then you're going to use burst fire. You'll shoot over here. I mean, I don't want you to hit Abelard. That does concern me, but he's going to be okay. Yeah, move up. Attack. Let's see what you can do. You took out two. Oh my god. Incredible. Running gun. I love her bolter. She's great. If only she wasn't married to her job, right? All right. Next, we'll attack over here to the left. We've used running gun. We got another one. After that, war him. Even more momentum. If we want to, we could use our heroic act. That's true. That would be great. I would like to. I've got the ammo. You know what? For fun. Let's make it happen. What are we going to shoot at the moment? Well, I've got a few options. A high chance to hit that guy. Do not hit Abelard. Another dead guardsman. There's only a few left. <laughs> oh, I feel the power. Come on, Argenta. Another hit. My god. Or, sorry, my emperor. Faith my god emperor. Squad commander. Also hit. 14 damage. She's not done. <laughs> Divine retribution. It's working out. All right, her turn is finally over. Round two. Squad commander, you don't have a squad. Oh, he's losing it. Look at him. He doesn't know what to do. Do I feel bad for him? No, I do not. Bring it down. Absolutely. For fun, I'll use my regimental tactics. Why not? He might be too far away for me to actually see him. Well, that's all right. Voice of command. I'll use it on Abelard. Abelard is about to devastate him. It's going to be awesome. All right. I can't make a shot over there. You know what? I'm going to end your turn. Idira, there's only so much that you're able to do. But here's what we're going to do. Expose weakness. The operative removes all exploits from the target to decrease the target's dodge, parry, and armor. <laughs> all right. Let's do that then. On it. Oh, he's going to be weak. Very, very weak. Look at that dodge. It's down. All right, her turn is over. I don't want her to do more. Do not use Vel powers willy-nilly. I mean, I use them a lot, but... Got to be careful. Let's charge. Come on, Abelard. It's up to you. Dead. We've won. The battle is over. I'm going to pick up loot What's and have mean? a look around. There's bound to be a lot. Let's have a look. Yeah, last pistol. We've got auto pistols. Some flak. Okay. Well, I found some interesting loot. All the garbage, like last guns, that I'm not going to use, I put it away in my cargo. And it looks like there's something called the child. Not only that, the keeper's done a few rather suspect things, too. 
Look at this here. Like the last time he commanded that we cut off communication with Rykid Menors for a while. I wonder why. I also found a mutated flesh sample. Datacrypt H-40-KO. And one meteorite chunk. Oh, here's a really good item. A Ripper Auto Pistol. 3-5 to five damage. 5% five more armor penetration than the one we had before. Not bad. I'll try it out in our next battle. We just need to open a door. No danger inside. Oh, hey squad commander. I'll take what you have. Okay, a chest plate. I'm not going to wear it. I don't want to reduce my dodge for Gideon. And again, Argenta. She's got magic fingers. I better myself through my service. All right, I'll pick up more goods later, though. Oh, there's Adira. Damned warp. If we'd been in real space, I'd have heard. I'd have... Adira, stop castigating yourself. Your soothsayings have always been vain. Even if you had her, who among us would have realized that it was Lady Theodora who was in peril? That's very true. All right. I cleared away some wreckage. We've got noble silk gloves, providing plus five to persuasion. I actually need a bit more for tech use right now, but later I'll get Gideon to wear those. We already have a lot of persuasion for him. Let's open up. We need to move further inside. Oh, there's bound to be more traps. Yep, right there. But we can't disarm it, not here. That means we need to go around. I'm able to see that line, that wire. I'll try tech use right now. Locked? That's all right. I've got a tool, a melted charge. Thank you, Argenta. That was quick. No countdown. <laughs> all right, now we get to disarm that trap. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Easy. We've got more guardsmen inside. Did you hear the screams? Move. That guardsman is losing it. Sir, are you all right? We can't hear anything. You can't hear the voices? I know I can. I mean, in the video game I can. He's got a gun. I don't like that. Now I see. You're in league with him. So now he's fully on paranoid. Many people are about to die. If you're in 40k, and you see that happening, you better shoot first, or you're not going to make it. One dead. That'll be two. And one more. They've all died. Tragic. I know. You're all traitors. Traitors, all of you. And now he's talking to me. Do I shoot him? I'll do it. I don't mind. There it is. I'm a better shot. All right, hold on. Let's go inside real quick. Right over it's here to pick up what we can. More cargo. I'm really happy to have cargo, not a bunch of clutter. All right, more loot after that. And some more goods. Okay, so another unique item. That'll come into play later. We'll find out. All right, one more guard. Well, there's going to be more. There's always more. Let's pick up these goods and... We've got research notes. Okay, I'll have to read those in just a moment. I'm going to open up a door. We've got people inside. Servants. And have a look. The warp. The walls are getting strange. Wait, I'll talk to you. You might have some information. You've got a name. Howdy. Or you can do that. Okay. You know what? You wait there. I'll uh, do something else. Tech use. Come on, work out. Heck yeah. Which means even more loot after that. A long glass, a sniper rifle. Heck yeah, man. And a carapace. Now that I am going to equip. Light armor, 20% armor. A very high chance to dodge. Yeah, I'll give it to Gideon. He's going to wear it. He's going to look very cool. I'll check out all the treasure. We're not going to have to worry about reputation at all. And one more locker. Tech use again. It worked out. We got it. Because Gideon has 45 for his ballistic skill, I'm going to give him a long last use for a battle. We'll see how it plays out. And of course, he's got his armor. Oh, I did check out those notes. The child makes me a bit nervous. We need to be careful. Evidently, it's got a lot of power. And here's a rough bloody sketch. A crumpled sheet of paper with a drawing of a tall woman and a dark-eyed monster. 
Paint it with blood. How creative. All right, let's move on. There's another door to open up. There it is. Awaken the cogitator spirit. The cogitator's vid screen is covered in cracks and stained with dried blood. The button switches and levers are ripped out of the control panel with exceptional cruelty and scattered around a secret mechanism that now sparks and hisses in agony, still refusing to perish. I'll never throw out a toaster again. Wake up, cogitator. You turn a few of the remaining dials and pull the activation lever. The cracked vid screen of the sacred engine flickers. The cogitator's insides emit creaks and groans, and the lumens oscillate at random. There we go. Call for help. They're not going to be able to help us. First off, let's go to main elevator controls. Activate it. Done. All right. But we're not done yet. Main chamber controls. Let's open up all the doors. Oh, data corrupted. All right. I'll open everything. That's what I'm going to do. I'll press all the buttons. And I did something. Hopefully that was a good thing, or maybe I made everything worse. It couldn't be too bad. I doubt the cogitator would be geared to do anything too destructive. Otherwise, they might have used that tool already. Alright. The protocol has been executed. The passage has been opened. Good to know. So now that we've done that, we could get data. Felic, he's alive. Theobald, over in the upper chambers. Three are dead. I'll have a look. Encrypted data. Let's have a look at that. Tech use 25. I'll try to break through the machine guardian's defenses. It failed. Well, that's all right. It won't always work out. Let's get out of here. Oh, that can't be good. Too many voices. I can hear their rage. The door is open. What Come and oasis? avenge us. So what do we have in here? Oh, the lab. Right, we've got to make that rod. I'm going to loot everything in just a moment. I just want to have a look around. Lady Cassia is Medica. I'll talk to you. No, never mind. You don't have much to say. I'm going to make that control rod in just a moment. After I pick up all the goods. There's also stuff that I could put down. If I read all the notes, I bet we could get something. Otherwise, why would we be here? There would be no other reason. I've got some notes already, but I need a lot more. Research notes part 12 have been very handy. They're talking about crystal dust. I was able to grind up that psi stone in that one transducer right by us. Corrupted flesh. Biogel, because we don't want to use acid. And the H-41-OK. Which means we just had to slot things to where they need to go. I've only got one more piece to put inside. The crystal dust. There it is. Let's turn it on. And that gave me... Okay, adaptive antidote. Nice. I wonder if there's more stuff I could get. Maybe if I check out more notes, but I'm done for now. Grant immunity to toxic damage and inflicts a minus 10 penalty to toughness. Well, if we're fighting anyone who follows Nurgle, that would be great to have. Now we've got to make that one control rod. Okay, that was pretty easy. I've remade it. I only need to go talk to Felix now. So let's go back. Marching I went back to the cogitator. I don't really trust Felix. I wanted to find out some more information. And he's not to be trusted. Felix Orcelio looks a little better. His tangled hair is now neatly braided. You were so worried about your mistress that you had time to preen. Interesting. He says to Gideon... You dealt with the threat and powered the elevator. Well done. I trust you brought the activation rod as well. Idira suddenly cocks her head and drives her nails deep into her shoulder. Then she starts mumbling. She's talking about a blind man and a traitor. And there's a pathway that leads to each one. We know that Felic is not blind. Well, thank you, Idira. Everything is clear. Let's go back to Felic. Oh, and he doesn't really care for Idira. This station has enough problems without your sorcery, Psyker. Felic waves Idira off and looks back at Gideon. <laughs> you want the key? That's interesting. Those guardsmen that we met, they didn't seem insane. One lost it, but that happened right then and there. 
with all the reports, all the information about Felic, he's been a rather bad keeper, which means I believe he's a traitor. The vibes were off from the very beginning. I'm going to hold on to the key. There is darkness swirling in Felic Rosilia's bottomless eyes as he bares his sharp teeth in a defensive snarl. Care to explain yourself? Well, tell me about the child. I've seen that mentioned in documents and reports all over the station. The child is what the station servants call Lady Cassia. Interesting. Ah, there we go. Those madmen I fought were convinced that we were the traitors. He says, that's why they are insane. The servants here alone cannot be blamed for what happened on the station. Most corpses I discovered were either unarmed or feeble. Did you really think mere servants could plan a coup? The senior officers are just as guilty. Half of my guards butchered one another because they suspected treason. Now hold on. I've got another point. Destroying shuttles? Shutting off the power? Disabling security? Too many things happened here that would require special access. Access that a keeper would have. As I'm sure you are aware, there were two keepers. Your guess is absolutely correct. It's not a guess. Theobald Arcelio, the demented old man obsessed with Lady Cassia and her power. I also heard a recording. It was between some officers. And there's one thing that would really bother Gideon. Someone not following security protocols. Felic did not do that. If he slipped up one time, okay. But it's happened everywhere. Clearly, we can't trust him. I would not trust you as far as I could throw you, Felic or Cilio. I've got everyone in position. We're surrounded. We're going to have to focus on one side at a time. And we also want to take out Felic pretty early on. 58 wounds total. He's also got ebb and flow, a permanent buff. Every even turn, the navigator gains an additional action point. That's really dangerous. Every odd turn, he gains plus 20 perception. Abelard will stay right by him. Let's begin the battle. Argenta, you get to move first. All right, move right here. You're going to use your burst fire. Get to attacking. Hopefully you'll hit someone. No kills outright. Not yet. Use your war helm. That way we'll gain more momentum. And running gun. Okay. If you use another burst fire, your chance to hit anything at all would be quite low. Ah, do it anyway for fun. Come on. All right, two kills. She did it. <laughs> Argenta, you're done. All right, Gideon, you're going to use voice of command. Let's buff up Abelard. Yeah. Then you're going to use regimental tactics. More damage. A lot of extra damage. And bring it down. An extra action for Abelard. That's what we want right now. Alright, I'm going to have him use Strike. A guaranteed hit. 24 damage. Then Brace for Impact, increasing his deflection, reducing damage. And Endure. There we go. Temporary Wounds. He's even tankier. His turn is over. Back over to Gideon. Why don't we shoot Felic? Look at that damage. 23. Whoa. Oh, that's really good for us. And Abelard was able to cut Felic down. He tried to get away. A dodge from Abelard. Wait, you were able to dodge a shotgun blast? Incredible. All right, let's have a look around. So we need to kill that bodyguard right by Argenta. We're going to use Analyze Enemies. What? Yeah, let's what add some exploit you? stacks over to him. That's a really good buff for us and our damage. Next, we're going to use Psychic Shriek. They should die. Ah, close enough. 13 damage. We were pretty close. Why don't we use Forewarning? I'll use it on Argenta. It's going to buff her up. There we go. Extra Ballistic Skill, all thanks to one of our talents. Adira is done. Okay, Abelard. I could have you charge over there to kill that one bodyguard, but there are more that we need to worry about too. Uh, but we are exposed way over here. So I'm going to come on down, then shift two to charge. 
I've we'll go after him. Got him. Another dead enemy. Okay, Daring Breach. I could get back my movement points and action points. Let's do it. There's my ultimate ability. All right, we're going to move way over here. And it's time to strike again. Abelard introduces me to people, and he kills my enemies too. I love him. Another hit. All right. We won't be able to charge again, but that's okay. He's done. He's done his part. Oh, you're so lucky we can't actually get over there. Normally, I would have him use a gun, but he barely ever needs it. Oh, Get Abelard to barely took any damage at all. Abelard. I mean, what, two points to our temporary hit points. Again, he dodged a freaking shotgun blast. Okay, Argenta, you'll move over. Right over here. Back to blasting. I'm not worried about their numbers anymore. No kills, but she hit every single time. All right, Gideon. Voice of command. You'll use it on... Hold on, let's move over here. Idira. Do that. And I want you to shoot. Look at that high chance to hit. Who's going to move next? You? Not anymore. 14 damage. Completely wiped out. All right, bring it down. I'll use it on Argenta. Yeah, I'll get her to shoot again. I refuse. A decent chance to hit. All right, you know what? Go for it. Hopefully it works out. Yeah, 10 damage. Pretty good. We're done for now. A bit exposed, but that's all right. What we'll do, we'll use another Shriek. Taking out one enemy. The other guy, yeah, he's off away in a corner. We'll get him later. Only one more to worry about. All right, forewarning for who? Abelard. That'll buff him up. He's a tough one. Okay, analyze enemies. Nope, we can't see him, so we can't use it on that last enemy. Now, Abelard, are you going to be able to charge in? Yes. That's incredible. He made it. 11 damage, but we're not done. We'll strike again. Now we're done. We beat them all. What do you have, Orsilio? A staff of House Orsilio. Castigating five. Enemies targeted by the navigator powers gain a minus 5 penalty to all their characteristics until the end of the navigator's next turn. This penalty stacks and is renewed every time the same enemy becomes the target of the navigator's powers. Plus 5 to willpower and perception. That's really good. Of course we'll take it. Then we've got tactical goggles increasing a hit chance by 5% and a critical hit chance by 3%. I'll give it to Argenta. We've got a keeper's control rod. Alright, I'm double rodding. And we have a dead shot stub revolver. You've got to have 35 strength. That's really high. That trigger pull is quite heavy. 8 to 16 damage. Of course I'll take it. I might use it later. Armored body glove. All right. Not a bad collection. We've gone up the elevator. Am I interrupting? That's almost a beautiful painting. Is it more paint or blood? Well, we've made it. The pale figure with unnaturally long limbs stands with her arms raised, her hands deformed with talon-like nails. Her deathly pale face is coated with blood that continually streams from her scarlet misted eyes. Her spiny gills, slightly hidden under her disheveled hair, twitch nervously at your approach. Only now do you notice the third eye on the young woman's forehead, hidden by a jeweled ornament, and when your eyes meet, you sense overwhelming soul-smothering power. Thankfully, because of camaraderie from her Hive World pick, we were able to use our awesome fellowship score instead of willpower, so we did pass a test for willpower. You are enveloped in despairing grief, and an invisible hand closes around your throat, cutting off your breath. Your limbs seem to fill with lead. Your heart hammers in your chest, and the desire to turn and flee from this room from this station almost gets the better of you. At the last moment, you master your emotions and your will pushes back against the illusion, forcing it to retreat. Twenty more experience. Idira emits something between a moan and a drawn-out whimper. Not you two. Ow, ow, ow! As if my own little pals weren't bad enough, 
Now this one's barging into my head. Somebody stop her. Regenta says, heresy. All right. I'm not going to talk to Abelard right now. I could use Iconoclast. That's true for my follower. However, I'm going to use Persuasion. Lady Cassia, I'm here to help you. Please calm yourself. Let's see if it works out. Thankfully, we did pass. She wearily shakes her head and lets out a drawn out sound similar to both a sob and the howl of a small winded animal. What is happening? Was someone calling my name? Are all the betrayers dead already? And you, who are you? Gideon von Valencius. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I don't know if what's going on here is normal. Maybe it is. Anise settles over her features and she nods cautiously. Pardon my manners, Gideon. I do not expect to make such a gracious acquaintance in such a time of great sorrow for our house. I feel faint. The heavy-set old man, who has been kneeling nearby, erupts into low sobs. His eyes swollen from crying dart desperately around the room, as though the veil of ignorance has just been ripped away from them. The child, Lady Cassia, where are you, sacred child? Throne preserve. Despite his venerable age, the navigator leaps up and rushes to the young woman's side. You. The old man shifts, revealing his face to you. It is threaded with jet black veins, and his bulging milky eyes bear a striking resemblance to those of a dead fish. Oh, I don't like that. He's dying. My eyes fail me, for they are unable to make you out as either enemy or ally. I am warning you, one wrong move will bring the wrath of House Arcelio down upon your head. Adir says, watch out, Lord Captain. This one's so deranged, it's making the whispers shriek like crazy. He might just open that eye of his. Abelard remarks, Threatening the head of the dynasty is a grave offense, esteemed whoever you are. Abelard places a hand on his weapon. Hold on. It's time for more persuasion. At present, I'm trying to determine what is happening on Yurik 5. It worked out. We passed. I'll grant that you do not look like pirates who have come coveting the riches of a wrecked station, or like scoundrels in Felix service, so who are you? Abelard, introduce us. His lordship, rogue trader Gideon von Valencius, heir to the greatest protectorate in the Coronis Expanse and bearer of the Sacred Warrant of Trade, extends his greetings. Another rogue trader in our corner of the galaxy. How interesting. Your kind always makes an appearance in desperate times, ready to cut a deal that benefits one side alone. Given that you have not so far drawn your weapons, your intentions are probably peaceful, and so House Orcelio now requires a service of you. Save the life of the child in exchange for future cooperation. Do not hurry to answer. Think on it. You can make yourself an ally or an enemy of our house today. You decide. Sure, I could do that. But hold on. What exactly do you want? Maybe I should find that out first. Hope glimmers in his milky eyes. Save the sacred child. Take her away from this station. I fear I do not have long left. Okay. Save the child and deliver her safely to Regent Oronto, acting head of House Orcelio in the Cronus Expanse. Adira says, I know we came here for a navigator, but after everything we've seen, I've got some reservations about this girl. That's a lot coming from Adira. Argento looks at Cassia, and a painful furrow appears on her brow. Such a fragile thing, with such a heavy burden upon her shoulders. Well, tell me about what happened between you and Felic. Felic is my wayward student. He came to Yurik 5 as a callow youth. I personally mentored him and entrusted him with the care of the child. He was like a son to me, but he proved to be just another traitor. He sought to steal our most precious treasure, the heir of our house, our sacred child, to revel in power with others like him, casting our house into the abyss. You can see the fruits of his villainy yourself. He decided he was not bound by his duties to the legacy of the greatest of our innovators, Tisiphone Orcelio, who led her house to prosperity for countless years. Foolish boy. The renegades clouded his mind. Right. You are talking as though you expect to die here. He shrugs. My service to the house is coming to an end. The wounds Felic inflicted on my flesh were never heal. I am dying. Tragic. There is a medica deck on my ship. We could try to help. No, I'm the Keeper of Yurik 5, and I will perish along with my station. 
On that note, I have other matters to attend to. Alright, I've made my decision. We couldn't trust Felig, and according to Adira, we should be fine here choosing Cassia. Cassia shall come with me. Good. That is good. The old man nervously licks his lips, but do allow us to say our proper farewells. Wake up, my mistress, my sacred child. It is all over now. It is over. <laughs> what? What happened? You. I remember you. Have you come to save us? Child, please. Listen to me very carefully. One last time. You will now embark on a voyage with this lord to rejoin the house and its regent in the Coronas Expanse. <coughs> I... I will not be able to accompany you on this journey. No! Not you too! Don't leave me alone in this violet-brown haze! You... You're coming with me! Your mistress is giving you an order! Do you hear me? Mistress, I fear this will be your only order that I dare to disobey. I am the Keeper of Yurak Five, and alas, I have less than a day in me. Allow me to serve you one last time, and honor my final duty to House Orselio. I will remain on the station, and destroy the secrets it holds. <gasps> oh, Theobald. Forgive the urgency, but we shall leave the station immediately. These systems are unstable and may fail at any moment. But this is my... My home. Please, child, do not be stubborn. Remember your duty to the house and let those thoughts bring you strength. What... What are you going to do to me? I could have her sign a contract, but they're needing to depend on us. She won't betray us. Lady Cassia, let us aid one another, become my navigator, and I shall restore you to House Arcelio at the earliest opportunity. Theobald says, Do not fear what is to come, child. You are ready to guide any vessel. I know this because I taught you myself, and it is difficult to imagine more worthy company than a rogue trader. But remember, your safety is of paramount importance. Get to the Great Regent and fulfill your destiny. <sighs> I beg your pardon, but what about my servants? Yurak 5 is still full of people loyal to House Orselio. Anyone who wants to join can join. We did lose a lot of people. Hopefully they're willing to work. Hmm. Okay. Accompanying a rogue trader on their travels is an honor for any navigator. Let us go. I can no longer bear the sight of the deathly pale shadows that drape the bodies of the fallen. We've got a new member on our side, and we leveled up too. That's really great news. I wonder... Oh, there could be more goods here for me to pick up. That's great. For Gideon at level 6, I gave him lasting impression. Half of the bonus granted by the voice of command remains until the end of combat. And I also increased his fellowship by 5. For Abelard, I gave him sworn enemy. Whenever he marks a single target, he's going to gain more armor and he's also going to be able to deal more damage with melee attacks against that same target. If that target attacks him, then he's going to gain one additional action point once per round. For Adira, I gave her Fatebringer. Allies under the effect of at least one psychic power gain additional armor penetration. We're all about bypassing armor. Imagine we fight some Chaos Space Marine or whatever else. We need to be able to get through that armor. We've also got over here more intelligence. Now for Argenta, plus 5 to her ballistic skill. I'll always focus on that, I want her to be able to shoot well. Then I gave her Rapid Fire. Her next burst attacks will have its rate of fire doubled, but it's going to deal 25% less damage. 
That's all right, though. We're here to have her shoot constantly. All right, Cassia, another officer. However, I'm going to build her two officers in very different ways. I was able to allocate two levels for her, which means I gave her more willpower. And over here, another very powerful talent. Eye of Oblivion. Every enemy the navigator has in their line of sight has its dodge and hit chance reduced by two times the navigator's perception bonus. So two times five, ten. Minus ten to a hit chance and dodge. That's so good. Down over here, we've got another talent. Veil of Protection. Allies that are targeted by the navigator's power gains an additional 10% armor. And even more willpower. We've made it back to the bridge. I wonder what she's doing here right now, though. Boy, do I love my throne. The Vox Master speaks. Lord Captain, Lady Navigator, welcome aboard. The Sanctum Navis has been prepared for the communion ritual, but the Lady Navigator wishes to rest in her quarters first. Oh boy. Your heart starts beating furiously, your breaths come short and choppy, and your fingertips tingle unpleasantly. You notice that Vigdis is shivering slightly, and the crew are glancing around in puzzlement, searching for the source of this sudden wave of unease. Without even looking at the Vox Master, Cassia waves her away. First I wish to speak with a rogue trader. Leave us. Uh, of course. When you are ready for the ritual, please let me know. Hey, don't be rude to my Vox Master. We are here to command, but we're going to treat people like people. We're going to find out who she truly is. Hopefully I made a good decision. Cassia sweeps her pensive gaze over Vigdis, then lowering her lashes a little bit, turns to you. All right, what do you want to talk about? After hesitating for a few seconds, she lets out a small exhale. I have not yet thanked you for saving me on the station. My thoughts were clouded with so much mournful ash when Theobald's heart stopped, but you acted honorably and did not exploit me in my wretched position, and for that, I am immeasurably grateful. I am also deeply grateful that you saved my servants, especially my valet. Uwe served on the station for more than five years, much longer than any who preceded him. He knows how to properly attend to me during journeys through the Immaterium and what to serve me for breakfast. <laughs> That's really important, you're right. His presence envelops me in a cloak of amber. But now, she throws back her shoulders. I'm ready to go to the Sanctum Navis and perform the sacred rites. I require brushes, canvas, and the best paints you have on board, but no red. <laughs> All right. I'm going to assume she needs everything here for her ritual. Otherwise, she wouldn't want it. I shall ensure that all necessary supplies are delivered to the Sanctum Navis. She nods and thanks. I shall take my leave of you for the duration of the ride. I ask that you do not follow me if you can survive the gaze of my warp eye when it is opened. Oh, okay. The Vox Master is coming back now. Hopefully it all goes well. Lord Captain, I will oversee the open channel between the Lady Navigator and the bridge, and may the Emperor's Light help us all. The Vox Caster and the Sanctum Navis picks up the susurration of clothes, pious chanting, and the metallic clicking of implants. Then the serene voice of the Lady Navigator breaks the silence, initiating communion ritual. Come here, Uve. The exultant ring of metal freed from its scabbard, the low sob of the servant. The rhythmic drip of liquid on canvas. The faint whisper of the brush. Go. Footsteps hurrying away. I see violet vortexes, lashing an ocean with a million flails, and umber shadows spinning over the surface in a fiery dance. A storm is rising above the foaming waters. Armadas drowning in fog. The path from one end to another cannot be seen. And here beyond the wall of glass, a daughter forsaken by her father yearns for her brother, and the sun's pale disk goes in tireless pursuit. Of her? No, of me. Its frozen rays lie that spring is here. The light is deadened. The great ruler is gone. The Vox Master recoils at Cassia's words and accidentally snaps one of the cogitator levers. The panel beneath her fingers emits sparks, and the Vox Caster falls silent. She quickly flips a series of switches and bows guiltily. My abject apologies for cutting off the broadcast, Lord Captain. I've never heard the wharf speaking through a navigator before, which is understandable. Gideon hasn't heard it either, but we need to continue. Their soul-shredding screams that drown out the Vox transmission. They're all howling and shrieking, but then the servants are all quiet. 
you only hear bodies dropping. They're dead. It, it appears the servants were part of the Lady Navigator's right, as it was for her predecessor. I will arrange for the bodies to be removed from the Sanctum Navis after the ritual, or what is left of them. Cassius says, Rogue Trader, I fear I have unfortunate news. Endless blackness has spread across the canvas, dividing what should be whole in two, and my sight cannot glimpse the light of the Emperor as clearly as before. I cannot turn around. My brush only draws me onward. The way is blocked. You hear a heavy exhale, rustling fabric, and metallic clicking. By the Emperor's grace, the ritual all worked out. Your vessel's temperament presented a challenge. Its cold steel grip did not allow me to breathe freely even for a second. It was as if the depths of the ship housed not only machine spirits, but something other. Now I will retreat to my chambers to recover my strength. Send for me if you have need of me. Oh god, what's in my ship? Lord Captain, congratulations on acquiring a navigator. Spare me a few moments of your time, please. Alright. Because we went over to the station first, it's not in a critical state to where we need to worry about it blowing up just yet. If we want to, we could scavenge. Sure, gather any components that may be of use. And after that? You want me to pick up one engine seer prime? Well, don't worry, I'll do that. She goes on to say, We are also missing some crew. And much more importantly, we have not yet located Heinrichs, the right-hand man of the Lord Inquisitor. Now we know for sure he was not at Yurik 5. Gotcha, thank you. As it pleases you, Lord Captain. Let's have a look at that void ship. It's got to be friendly. At least I hope so. What now, Vox Master? Lord Captain, there is some commotion on the officer's deck. The Lady Navigator has left her quarters and is currently in the ward room. Lord Captain, my apologies. I, I did not notice your entrance. He's going to point at the book in her hands. I see you are fond of reading. Oh, this. <laughs> I found this fascinating read on one of the shelves. And I must say, it has caught my eye. Its every chapter is written in verse. I find it so beautiful and enrapturing. Yurak V had a vast archive of its own, of course. Although most of the works within had to do with scholarly disciplines of some sort or another. Only in my sparse moments of respite was I allowed to escape into the pages of more embellished works. The events that took place in Yurik V must have shaken you greatly, are you well? One should not underestimate the navigators of House Orselio, Lord Captain. Like a shawl of pale smoke, a faint malaise hangs upon my shoulders. But it will not be the slightest hindrance to my duty to humanity, and my duty to you. Your only attendant is your valet from Yurik V. Do my servants not measure up to your standards? No, no. It is not that at all, Lord Captain. It is just that Uve is quite capable of carrying out his duties by himself. He is well accustomed to my... my whims and preferences. And I passed a little perception test, too. Cassia cringes ever so slightly, adjusts the adornment on her forehead, then awkwardly hides her clawed fingers in the folds of her clothes. The unnatural appearance of navigators often becomes the topic of gossip among Lily servants and officers alike. It is unsurprising, then, that Cassia prefers the company of one who is used to how she looks. Gideon, back in his military days, which really wasn't too long ago, would often use abhumans in combat. He saw that they were able to fight very well. He's not going to judge someone for how they look, provided they are loyal to the Emperor. I hope that you have had ample time to calm yourself and your powers. There are people on this ship who are far more impulsive and dangerous to others, and far less devoted to the God Emperor than a herald of the Navis Nobilite. Hmm. But I did not need your words to see the shades of umber unease that whirl around your subjects whenever I am near. Were I not acquainted with such a reaction, I could have found their behavior in your question just now insulting. Lord Captain, would you kindly explain to me why you are pestering me with these questions? Inquiring about my mood and my needs, showing an interest in the books I am enjoying? You are behaving as if you possessed a shred of 
fellow feeling for one such as I. I beg your pardon, Lord Captain. That was no way for a navigator to conduct herself. And here's where Gideon gets into trouble. He likes to really establish a good type of relationship with his fellows who work with him or underneath him. We're not going to treat them like a bunch of dogs. Of course, when the time comes, when we need things done, they need to get it done. However, we're in our off time at the moment. He'll say, you have nothing to apologize for. Human emotions are natural, be they good or bad. And it is just as natural to share them with others. Please forgive me. I cannot even understand myself right now. Your words and attention have reminded me of life on the station. Of Theobald and Felek. I do not understand. They were merely the keepers of Urak 5. So why do memories of those two make me feel a strange heaviness here? You were betrayed, and that old man cared for you quite a bit, clearly. At the same time, I find myself overwhelmed with new excitement and anticipation. At last, I have set foot outside my familiar walls, and into a world that I have only seen before in the pages of books. Your ship alone is a treasure trove of remarkable artifacts and curiosities. And just imagine the things that await beyond, but... <sighs> My delight must seem childish to you, surely. In your heart, you must be finding all this quite amusing. Actually, I understand what you are going through. My own life was turned upside down, not too long ago. Really, not that long ago. Indeed. I... I did not know. That is to say, I could not have known as it is the first time we are speaking in a circumstance so... private. My word, when I found this place, it was so full of officers. Why did they all leave? Gideon is not going to flirt with her. They just met. He barely knows her. Instead, what he'll say is, I do not tolerate idlers on this ship, and my officers know it well. Then, I must take my leave as well. I am due to inspect the Sanctum Navis after the Communion Ritual and prepare the chamber for the upcoming Warp Jump. Thank you for your company. Maybe now we'll be able to make it to that one Void ship. Nope, never mind. Lord Captain, sorry to disturb you. It's pandemonium outside the bridge gate. One of the officers seems to be demanding an audience with you in person. Alright, let's go. I wonder what it's about. She should know better. What she's doing right now could get her into a lot of trouble. The everyday sounds of the bridge are disrupted by voices raised in anger. Abelard's voice, the loudest of all. This is not the conduct of an officer. These are the antics of a highborn brat out on a lark. Explain yourself, Lieutenant. I, I apologize, sir, but I've got to talk to the Lord Captain. Very well, Lieutenant. Lord Captain, Lieutenant Avrila Vent. Requesting permission to speak. Alright. Tell me what you've got to say. This matter cannot wait. Any minute now, an assault unit will be dispatched to the lower decks on orders to crush the workers' strike by any means necessary. But I am convinced that this step is unwarranted, and that the crisis itself was provoked by the actions of one of the senior officers. Interesting. You're talking about Abelard. You better be correct. We're going to investigate. I do trust Abelard, but I know right now he's very tense. The lady captain died, and it's hurt him, which is understandable. There's an insurrection in the making aboard my ship, and no one has told me? Abelard says, I would not deem it a problem worthy of the rogue trader's attention. The lower decks, as it so happens, are in revolt. Thirty-some years ago, we even had a revolutionary leader rise up who dared to establish workers' rule across the entire ship. It took a month to restore order, but even eight years later, we were still battling rumors that the hero had survived his execution and was on the verge of gathering people to fight against tyranny once more. Abelard scoffs. Needless to say, the rumors were baseless. As for the current situation, we have sufficient enforcers to deal with it. Oh, I don't like that. That isn't for me, Abelard. Vint goes on to say too, 
But on this ship, the word of the Lord Captain carries more weight than a salvo from a hundred bolters. I'm sure that if the rogue trader addresses the malcontents directly, he will quell the unrest. I mean, I did talk to orphans not too long ago. Abelard responds, I dread to think what problem you will disturb the rogue trader with next. I've got time. I mean, I'm sitting down. I'm doing nothing else. If I may, your lordship, sending a hit squad to crush the rebellion is a means of ignoring the problem, not solving it. Well, tell me, how did it all start? The situation could boil over at any minute, so I'll give you the condensed version. It all began when the enforcers found a cultist amulet. Oh, that's good to know. I mean, we had an invasion. There's bound to be someone aboard who's a follower of chaos. We reported it up the chain immediately, arranged for a cleansing rite to be performed, and opened an investigation. No heretics have been found alive, but the search has brought tensions between enforcers and workers to a head. And what about, well, Abelard? What about him? I shall explain, Abelard intones grimly. I beg you to hurry, time is running out. I will not hurry. Since my competence is under scrutiny, I shall speak for as long as I see fit. There is an established order to the way things are done on this ship, and one of the pillars of that system is that the rogue trader's attention is not distracted by trivial matters. It is the Seneschal's role to ensure that. I have always handled internal problems myself, so of course when I received information about cultists hiding on the lower decks, I took the matter in hand. So long as I live, not one of the vermin who murdered Theodora von Valencius will find refuge on her ship. Well, hold on, Abelard. What you said doesn't completely match up with what Vint said. I want to investigate, then. Vint responds, You were far too heavy-handed. Arrests, interrogations, mass punishments for entire sectors. It has driven the people to the brink, Vint says bitterly. Now there is a strike on the lower decks, in Depot 4 to be precise. Three worker clans are involved. All right. Abelard, what do you have to say? I see no need to add anything. All right, fine. Well then, tell me about Depot 4. Depot 4 is one of the poorest sectors on the lower decks. It is home to clans of general laborers. They are not as valuable to the ship as the families who have served at specialized systems for generations. Understood? Vince says, Depot 4 is poor and troubled. But at worst, that means drunken fights and illegal rot gut brewing. We have handled the workers of Depot 4 in the past. We would have done so again if the crackdown on Depot 4 hadn't been so harsh. Alright. The problem is not limited to this sector. It is located on one of the most populated lower decks, and everything that happens there has a knock-on effect on all the neighboring sectors. I'm new here. It's good to know how things work. It might seem trivial. However, right now, I want to ensure that there are no issues. Imagine there's a bunch of unhappy people down there, and someone says, I'll help you out. I'll give you weapons, but you've got to help me out. That could end poorly. All right, look, I've heard enough. I will go down to the lower decks and deal with the problem personally. Praise the Emperor. Vin could not contain her relief. Thank you, Lord Captain. Abelard grits his teeth slightly, an enterprise bordering on the sophomoric. But... Please yourself, Lord Captain. However, I categorically insist that I escort you. Very well. Something ominous lurks ahead. No kidding. To ramble. Hey, Dwarsarian. Take that, scum. Oh, come on now. You can't throw things at him. No wonder he hates you. Abelard reflexively wipes the sweat from his brow in a startlingly human gesture. And a telling one. A rare moment where he allows his age and weariness to show through his armor-like veneer of self-assurance. The lower decks are a source of endless problems. He wants to replace everyone with servitors, but he's not able to do so. The people dared to disrespect a senior officer. They would not have had the chance to express such disrespect if we were not here, and if the situation had been dealt with by the relevant officers. It is a junior officer's worst failing to pass problems up the chain of command. I have never been able to abide it. I shall say it again, it was a mistake to come here. I must admit that the lieutenant is by no means the worst material for an officer, but in the name of Terra, the girl's the same age as my eldest great-granddaughter, and she has a gall to tell me how to manage the lower decks and hunt down cultists. It will be another twenty years at least before she can be trusted to act without oversight. Look, let's keep moving. 
They're getting old, man. The light of Very terror old. shines for us. I'm still new here. I've got to know about everything that happens for now. Then I'll delegate later on. Here we go. The sounds of a heated discussion reverberate through the ship's bays. Lieutenant Venn of the ship's enforcers is barring the path of a heavily built assault unit officer, and judging by their expressions and tone, the standoff has dragged on for some time already. I have my orders to put an end to the unrest and purge this entire sector. You're going to kill everyone? Dear God. You can take your orders and shove them. This is my deck and my sector. There are only three people who can waltz in here without my express permission. The first officer, the rogue trader, and the emperor himself. Abelard says. So not all my lessons fall on deaf ears. Your lordship. Alright. I want to talk to the strikers. Abelard's mouth twists, but he restrains himself and says nothing. Right you are, Lord Captain. Allow me to wish you good luck. We'll see how it works out. I've got a very high fellowship score, so I want to use it. A dozen pairs of eyes stare apprehensively at you. The people before you are typical inhabitants of the lower decks. You take in their simple clothing, crude weapons, and faces that display varying levels of mutation from the barely discernible to the strange to the outright grotesque. They've got three leaders, okay. Abelard, you really did drop the ball today. Rivet says, L Lord Captain, you've come down to us. Tell me what is troubling you. Why are you striking? Sh striking? That's news to us, your lordship. All we're doing is uh, asking questions, saying what we think. Ah, the old woman is spicy. Shut up, Rivet. Here's the deal, your lordship. Your damned enforcers are all over us down here. They say they're looking for cultists. One wrong word, and they're reaching for their batons. If they want to punish someone, they turn off the heating to whole bays for a week at a time, so we get sick and freeze. In my clan, too little one died from inflammation in their lungs, all because of those enforcers. That's really bad. It's one thing to punish someone for some manner of offense, but what they're doing here is torture. Argenta does not interrupt the workers, but you see the sadness well in her eyes when the children's deaths are mentioned. It's all true. Vin is the only enforcer officer who stood up for us. It's clear as day who had a mother from the lower decks. Your lordship, we're no villains here. We're honest workers, your servants. We plotted no disorder. We went on strike openly, and now we've got guns pointed at us. All we're doing is asking to be allowed to work in peace without being harassed. Now hold on. The persecution started apropos of nothing, you say. I was told that one of you was found in possession of a cultist amulet, and that there's heretics hiding here. A cultist amulet? The gigal they found on the dead drunkard? If it was something evil or forbidden, we sure didn't know. The enforcers just said they were looking for heretics among us, and anyone obstructing their investigation would be punished. But how could there be heretics here? We knew our own people. There have been no new faces around. That is true, they are clans. Rivet follows up. Definitely not. And if there were, we would be the first to openly report them. The old woman. She says, And as for that amulet, or whatever it is, they took it off a dead body. There are no cultists still breathing in our sector, that's for sure. But when that fight broke out, some enterprising folks looted the bodies. The boots that they came back with, nobody's ever tread these decks in boots, so fine, I can tell you that. Seems to me these cultists have better commanders than us. Old lady, that's a bit much. Oh yeah, those boots were really fine, and there is no harm in taking them, right? As for the amulet, it must have been pocketed by someone who didn't know any better. We don't need any amulets around here, we all worship the Emperor, and when we're working we bow down before the machine spirits of the large and small transformers and the servo motor, the same way my grandfather was taught a hundred years ago by a tech priest who came calling. Believe us, your lordship, we are people of faith. Our gents is not happy about that. Naive children. Weren't you taught from an early age about the dangers of the arch enemy's creations? Weren't you warned that any unfamiliar object could be one of them? She's not wrong. We were told, Holy Sister, but it was long ago. The last time we saw a confessor in our sector, it was just after I had my third little one. That is regrettable, but you cannot lay the burden of leading a righteous life on the shoulders of the Holy Fathers. Who will you blame when bees crawl out of those amulets you stole from the heretics? The Holy Father who is not there or the scavenger who brought evil down on himself and his neighbors. That's true. 
I could question Abelard, but I don't want to dress him down in front of everyone here. That would make him look weak. That wouldn't be right. You don't want to do that. I should do it privately, but not here. What changes do you want? Would you look at this? The exalted Lord Captain himself is asking us bilge rats what we want. Well, here's what. We want you to rein in your damned enforcers, to quit turning off the heat, and to stop battering everything that moves. No, that's not it. We want the enforcers gone from here, and we want to be armed. Give us arms and we'll govern ourselves. We'll defend ourselves if these cultists do show their faces. I've been leader of my clan for 20 years now. Getting rid of these club-wielding thugs can only improve things around here. She's an idiot. I'm not doing that. You've gone too far, old man. They'll never let the maggots on the lower decks live without the enforcers breathing down their necks. They probably even insist on the enforcers on the upper decks too. As for weapons, what do we need them for? Before the first day is out, we'll have someone shooting their neighbor out of stupidity or drunkenness. We don't need that. If the enforcers stop hassling us, that'll be enough. In return, we'll find the scavengers who robbed the cultists' bodies and we'll talk to them, one lower decker to another. If there are any more of his damned amulets about, we'll hand them over to the enforcers ourselves. You speak for yourself and your clan, and I'll speak for me and mine. I don't want empty gestures. I want real change. They'll promise us the world now, but as soon as the Anointed One turns his back, these brutes will be on us even harder than before. All because we dare to speak out. The tall worker's eyes dart between the two arguing leaders. Every few seconds, he opens his mouth, as if planning to agree, but each time he falls silent, simply making a few vague noises of approval. I could talk to Abelard, but he wanted them all killed. I'm going to use my coercion. Spreading anarchy on the ship is the first step towards embracing chaos. Putting weapons into untrained hands would be even worse. What's more, the enforcers are needed to maintain oversight and order. Withdraw those demands, and we will consider the rest. It worked out. The tall worker they call Rivet shrugs and casts a sidelong look at the old woman. Old Nan, listen, listen! The Lord Captain himself has come down to us and is offering concessions, and I don't know a single person in the whole of Depot 4 who's ever stood next to the rogue traitor, let alone talk to them. Back down. Now there's no time for you to be a stubborn old crone. Listen to us, old man. The three clans of Depot 4 ought to act as one. We've made up our minds. It's your turn to decide. Alright. Good. It's going my way. You two are ganging up on me. Is that it? So brave you are against an old woman. But I'll shut up. I will indeed. I won't go against two clan leaders on my own. If you want to make peace with the enforcers, make your peace. The persecution will stop, and I will expect you to assist in locating any remaining amulets or weapons left by the cultists. Your lordship, thank you. You have not abandoned us lower deckers. You came yourself and settled everything. I'll tell my grandchildren about this. Of course, your lordship. We'll root out any nasty business faster than the enforcers, and we'll leave no stone unturned. There it is. It all worked out. All right. Let's go back. No one had to die. That's good. What now, Abelard? I know you're angry with how things turned out, but we should address our issues right now. He says to me, Well, are you pleased with your investigation, Lord Captain? You kowtowed. Oh, did I now? Hold on. Let's talk about your role in everything that happened. You allowed it to happen. In fact, you put all the ingredients together to form what happened. I would have handled the situation myself had you not decided to intervene. Remember Lord Captain Theodora? Do you think she ever set one slippered foot on the lower decks? No, she did not. Hey, that's fine, I do understand, but we've got a change in culture on our ship. I'm not going to be cruel to him. I know he's currently speaking his mind. I feel like Jack Aubrey at the moment. I would only be too willing to trust my seneschal and not fill my head with such matters, but the situation had spiraled out of your control, Abelard. His face does relax a little bit. You're right. At least as concerns junior officers making complaints directly to you. And I lost my temper, Lord Captain, and I believe I ought to explain myself. One of the most senior officers betrayed us all. The rogue trader was killed, and who knows what is happening on the planets. I'm telling you this honestly without fear of appearing weak. All this has come as a grievous blow to me. I am not panicking or grieving because I cannot allow myself to panic or grieve. I am duty bound to aid the new rogue trader, to aid you to find your footing quickly, as quickly as possible. 
And to do that, I must insulate you from problems that in the past have been dealt with by tried and tested procedures. Now hold on. I'm a new leader. The culture is going to change. I understand, but you need to learn how to respect me as your Lord Captain and Rogue Trader. Accept it and start living in the new world. A world where Theodora is gone and where you and I have new decisions to make. Yes, Lord Captain. Your resolve is admirable and demonstrates strong leadership. I shall remember this moment, should my old habits ever begin to creep back in. Maybe now we'll be able to check out that void ship. So we have a void ship sitting in a local asteroid field. I wonder who they are. Let's talk to them right now. They seem a bit scared and also confused. Master Helmsman, give me a damage report. They've been shot up pretty bad. Thunderfang, your vessel is badly damaged. What happened? Okay. You were minding your own business? Someone came to attack you. They're not telling me who. Huh. Void only knows. Thunderfang, why can't we identify you? They're trying to tell me that because of their damage, it's preventing correct identification. That sounds pretty weird. We assure you, we're a merchant vessel. <laughs> I don't know about that. Thunderfang, stop playing games. Tell me what you really are. Okay, they respond. Happy now? What have you done, idiot? It is too late now. Do you copy? We are from the Fellow of the Void. We do not come here to loot. We're on a different business to help our own out of jail. Do not hurt, please. Huh. Okay, the Master Helmsman is telling me. The Fellowship of the Void is an assembly of several dozen pirate factions. Interesting now. Well, I don't like that. They've got to go. I'm done having a conversation. Ah, my high factotum. He wants to engage in trade, which I do understand, but I don't care. Main gun deck on my order. Aim weapons. Do it now. Fire. There it is. They're gone. We made it all to level 7, which is great. I'll go over those changes later. We also need to pick out where we're going next. We could go to Ricardi Philia, the prison planetoid, or we could go to Ricard Menores. Let me know where you think we should go. Whatever pops up the most, that's where we'll go in our next part. We've got our navigator, but we've got a lot more to do. We haven't really found out too much information, not yet, and hopefully pretty soon we'll enter some ship combat. But that'll be it for right now, everyone. If you enjoyed this part, make sure that you do leave a like and comment right down below and let me know where we should go, as I did mention before. And as always, until then.